Ima jedan vjetar srebrnim čavlom zakovan. Ima jedan mjesečinom protkan i oganj. I jedno more i kamena splav nade. Zraka sunca za sve izgubljene bitke. Sewn across the Croatian Adriatic, through the resolute efforts of an invisible plowman, like chips of unpolished precious gems upon which stone fences and caverns are imbued to bursting with the shimmering wave of dawn's frost, with the wafting scent of sage, and where the sun's rays sear with summer heat and heal with velvet softness on a winter's day, are islands, reefs and cliffs whose real number has long been a matter for dispute. Age yellowed pages crammed with calligraphy speak of 1,175 of them. But then there are the extra ardent captivated by the faded ivory of a thistle, by the aquamarine of a mackerel's back, who will vouch that there are many, many more. In this confusion of geometrical harmony, discernible to and delighted in only by the loving eye of man, the 6,000 kilometers of mainland and island shores of this Croatian sea have been knitted into a filigree lacework whose rugged loveliness is matched only by the coastline of the Aegean Sea, of Norway or of Western Canada. But in such a context it would be invidious to say which is more beautiful and even worse to say which is less appealing. For these shores and their islands stand head and shoulder above the rest in the number and value of edifices built upon them eminently suited to welcoming hosts and to the vital needs of unknown seamen. The lighthouses of the Adriatic could aptly be described as open gates of welcome, places where shelter has been sought and found by mariners, fishermen, galley slaves, and so many others down the ages. To walk these landscapes is to walk through an ocean of fragrances, in tranquility, and with no desire to hold one's own with the tempo of time. In this magical limb of the antediluvian Mediterranean, which insinuated itself beneath the robes of ancient Europe deeper than has any other sea, it is a task of truly Gordian proportions to unravel the tangled knots of a history which began so long ago that much of it has been lost to us. There is no doubt, however, about the long continuum of man's presence and his habitats in these parts, where, much later on the barren rocks, only lighthouses could hope to spring from the ground. Little is known either about the ancient Pallasts, the Illyrians, or even the Liburnians, who sought to find a common civilizational denominator on the shores of the pre-Hellenic Adriatic. Much more is known about the Greeks and Romans, who have left their many traces on, for example, the Bryuni Archipelago, nearby the Pineda Lighthouse. If there can be any criticism of these climbs, it is that they never gave birth to their own Homer. For history is celebrated only in those realms where it is extolled in epic poesy, or so it is claimed. The islands and lighthouses of the Adriatic, those high seas gatemen to Croatian waters, seem as though woven from tales told at grandfather's knee, of secrets saved only for the eyes and ears of the chosen, of legend that can only be made more dramatic 
richer in rhapsodic imagery. Time, like some ancient bearded sage, down the centuries has embellished the legends surrounding the creation of the largest archipelago in these parts. The boastful Minos claimed with some justification that nothing in the world was the equal of his labyrinth. But his bombast finally angered the creator, who waved his hand over a massive Adriatic island, breaking it up into 147 silver slivers, and then allowed the sea to complete the miracle of birth. So it was that the Cornati came to be, the most mysterious island group in the Mediterranean, an archipelago upon whose stony countenance the sun clock registers only moments of happiness. The islands which provided a home for the lighthouses of Tyre, Trisestritsa, Prishnyak and Velirat are now protected by having the status of a national park. Hence, house rules condemns Trisestritsa to solitude and without a neighbour of similar ilk, even after their 120th birthday. This is the only region in the Mediterranean where it is possible to acquire an academy diploma with neither notebook nor pen, but with ample assistance from wind and wave. But should you think that all it takes is just to come here in order to obtain an academic title, you should be aware that many a rueful student at the Adriatic Nautical Academy in the beginning earned nothing more than blistered hands and wet pants, with much muttering about, did I really need this? Or, of all the seas in the world, I have to pick this one. It took their coming to the island of Jut. Faced with choosing the one sea that was the bluest and calmest of all the seas, what else could they do except set their helm for that part of the Adriatic Sea we call the Cornatis? The Adriatic submarine world is a reality which needs no verification. To doubt its striking beauty would be a sin. Once seen and experienced, this underwater world remains in the memory forever. Those really at home with the sea and its depths will be even more delighted with deep sea fishing expeditions. The lighthouses of Palagruja, Sushats, Glavat, their northern neighbours, Vnutak, Susak, and a few others, seem to mark the most significant positions on the map of the biology of the sea. The clefts and dreamy caverns, beneath the rocks, the shadowy safety of countless nooks and crannies, all offer the chance of exhilarating encounters with the shy gilthead and sea bass, with the easy-going grouper, and with the monarch of the Adriatic, the dentex. The lanterns of the Croatian South are imbued with a thousand virtues and with but a single demerit, if demerit it is. One has no need to go as far as the Urals or the steppes of Asia to meet centenarian club members. They are right here, within a few strong oar strokes in the middle of the Adriatic, where tales are woven through the mute but picturesque language of stone and sea. The first lighthouse, sighted on the Cape of Savudria, was built at the behest of the Austrian Count Metternich for obvious reasons of maritime safety, although some have whispered that it was erected as a monument to a clandestine love involving that famous political figure. Its inspired builders laboured hard and long for the smitten Count, who soon had another roof over his head and the eastern Adriatic seaboard its very first night eye.
Since that time, the importance of maritime routes in this part of the Mediterranean has grown steadily and constantly. With the passing of time, the treacherous byways of the Croatian Sea were illuminated by dozens of lighthouses, none of which is less than a hundred years old. Almost without exception, the lighthouses cling to the peaks of rugged, barren limestone cliffs. This unwritten law is broken by just two of them, those on Unia and on Susak. The first nestles at the edge of a fertile field, while that on Susak, an Adriatic island unique in its geological structure, could not have been built anywhere else but on sand. The geological makeup of the coast and of the islands in the Croatian Sea presents a real incentive to the young and others in search of the unusual to test their skills. The sheer cliffs of Sushats, Palagruja, Struga, Sveti Andria and many other islands within reach of the lighthouses pose a real challenge to the adventurous climber. Here another passion may be indulged. Just a stone's throw from the Puchistja, Rajan and Sveti Petha lighthouses, and where the stone meets the water, a crop of swaying masts. At the foot of the woodless crags and cliffs, the silent noon comes unannounced, etching its image in wrinkles on the cheek of the sea, on a rust-wreathed anchor lying idle on a dream-filled day, by its brash reflection in the smeared and salt-stained glass of a porthole. Through the muscular thump of seamen's clogs and the gentle whisper of the borer, whose tuneful hum penetrates every hull, this land inspires and nurtures an unseverable bond with the sea. Croatia's south, and we may surely be forgiven for regarding it with such boundless love, is a land so beautiful as to defy description. This none too large an area seems to have been blessed with all that those who wish to honour and enjoy, deeply, unhindered, and without disturbing the dreams of others, a life that is eminently suited to the human soul. And those eyes in the night these monuments to a continuum of life in the Croatian south stand tall in lending us their full support. Indeed, it could be said that their endurance, dignity, and even their air of wisdom restore our confidence in long-forgotten norms, in a life that, rather than passing us by, goes deep beneath our skin, in times in which there is no fear, but which in fellowship with the breeze we experience to the full. with unalloyed joy and affection.